Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Hope you're all having a wonderful day so far. So in today's video, we're going to be going over some different news in regards to Social Security and other government news. So in today's video, we're going to be touching base on the payments going out to some Social Security recipients tomorrow on February 3rd. That's going to be a Friday tomorrow or today, depending on when you're watching this video. Other than that, we're also going to be going over that meeting between House Speaker Kevin McCarthy and Joe Biden in regards to the debt ceiling. We're going to be discussing what they talked about and what came out of the meeting, if they made any progress. We're also going to be discussing how you can make the most out of your Social Security benefits, how you can get the best bang for your buck, so to speak. Also, more drama, more infighting within the Republican Party coming from the Senate. This is coming between Mitch McConnell and some other top Republican candidates. We're going to be discussing what's going on with all that. Now, before I jump into today's video, if you wouldn't mind helping me out real quickly by just giving this video a like, that just signals to YouTube that this video could potentially be helpful to other people like you as well. Also, if you would like to go ahead and grab up to 12 free stocks from Weeble, I will go ahead and leave a link in the pinned comment section below. Now, once you sign up, once you open an account with Weeble, you receive those first two free stocks. Then once you make a deposit of any amount, even as little as one penny, you'll then receive an additional 10 free stocks totaling up to 12 free stocks in total. Now, once you receive these free stocks, you can always sell them for what they're worth. It's probably going to be close to around $50 at minimum, and then you can transfer that money back to your bank account if you do not feel like investing at this point in time. Now, we're going to go ahead and jump right into this video. So from CNN, McCarthy hopeful after the first meeting with Biden on debt limit, he says that I think that at the end of the day, we can find common ground. So some pretty good stuff here. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy did not walk away from his highly anticipated White House meeting on Wednesday with an agreement in hand to address the debt limit, but signaled optimism that both he and President Joe Biden can reach consensus long before the United States reaches default. McCarthy and the president exchanged political jabs ahead of the meeting, preempting their negotiations with red lines relayed to the press and on social media. But emerging from the West Wing on Wednesday, the new House Speaker had an unexpectedly hopeful tone as he underscored that he believes that they can come to an agreement, even though he remains entrenched in rejecting a key demand from the White House. McCarthy told reporters after the meeting he informed Biden that the House would not pass a clean debt ceiling with no strings attached. So in order to raise the debt ceiling, McCarthy and other Republicans in the House are saying that we must come to an agreement, that we must lower federal spending. That way we're coming in balance with what we're taking in in tax revenue. That way we're not ballooning this national debt above $31 trillion, to say $35, $40 trillion. We need to get this under control. Now the meeting was around one hour. Biden before last month said we're not going to negotiate this at all. So apparently there were some negotiations going on, which is a step forward. Now, according to CNBC, yesterday we also had that Fed meeting, another Fed rate hike. This one actually ended up being a quarter point and they expect ongoing increases. So the Federal Reserve on Wednesday raised its benchmark interest rate by a quarter percentage point and gave little indication it is nearing the end of this, this hiking cycle. Aligning with market expectations, the rate setting Federal Open Market Committee boosted the federal funds rate by 0.25 percentage point. That takes it to a target range of 4.5 to 4.75 percent, the highest since October 2007. The move marked the eighth increase in a process that began in March 2022. By itself, the, fun the funds rate sets what banks charge each other for overnight borrowing, but it also spills through to many other consumer debt products. So if you have credit card, if you have credit card interest, you're going to see that it's going to go up a little bit more as well in line with this. Now, what came out of the meeting in uh, Jerome Powell's speech, he sees subdued growth in 2023, but not a recession. So this is, of course, good news. If we can avoid a recession, but lower inflation at the same time, that would be great news. Jerome Powell also said that the uh, inflation is not coming down everywhere. So we are noticing prices decreasing or, you know, not increasing nearly as much, but it is not coming down everywhere. Let me know in the comment section below if you know of areas where uh, things are not coming down. Of course, we know that egg prices are quite on the rise here. You almost have to be filthy rich to afford a dozen of eggs anymore. Um, also, he said that the Fed anticipates more rate hikes, but not bigger ones. And this suggests another 25 basis 
point rate hike at the next meeting in March and leaves open the possibility of an additional 25 point rate hike at the following meeting in May. So we may see more rate hikes to come. They're not going to be as aggressive like the 75 basis point rate hikes, but they are coming down and we may see this slowly come to an end by the end of this year. Now, in regards to some social security news, this is when you can expect to receive your February checks. Now, tomorrow, there are going to be some checks going out on the 3rd, February 3rd, tomorrow or today, depending on when you're watching this video. So according to CNED here, February 3rd, payments are going to be going to people on Social Security for those who receive both SSI and Social Security or have received Social Security since before May of 1997. Now you can also see other dates on here, February 8th, February 15th, and February 22nd. This will depend on your birth date, just like prior year, so I'm not going to be going over that. And here is the schedule from the Social Security Administration. So you can see here, February 3rd on Friday, this is when you're going to be receiving the payment if you receive both Social Security and SSI. Now according to the balance, there's also going to be some other people who are going to be eligible for this payment on the 3rd. So this is going to be for people, if your state is paying your Medicare premiums, you started receiving benefits prior to May 1st, 1997, you're receiving both Social Security benefits and SSI payments, or you reside in another country. Now this one I was not able to confirm on any other sources. I could not find it on the Social Security website, but I am interested if you know anyone who lives in another country, or if you live in another country yourself, is this true? Are you also receiving your payments from Social Security on the third of each month? Now, this is actually a pretty interesting concept. I mean, this is one way you can actually make your Social Security payments, you know, uh, go further and you can get sort of the best bang for your buck, your best bang for your buck here. So according to Go Banking Rates, these are the 10 best countries to live on just a social security check. So the United States has a very high cost of living. And on average, social security retirement payments are only around $1,800 per month. It's very difficult to get by. If you had to pay rent, if you had to pay property tax, if you own your home, if you had to pay for your groceries, healthcare, everything like that, it gets very expensive. However, in other countries, healthcare costs are very low. Some of them are actually free, but if you have to uh, have uh, like private health insurance, you can pay like as little as maybe like uh, $25 a month uh, in other countries. And they actually have free health care and, and food is much cheaper, rent is much cheaper, things like that. So we're going to be going over some countries here that would be very cheap to live in if you want to move abroad. So the first one on this list is Panama. It says, according to International Living, a couple can live in Panama for between $1,224 to $2,935 per month. That includes rent or mortgage on a two-bedroom apartment of $500 to $1,500 and electricity costs of $30 to $150 per month. Next up on the list, we have Costa Rica. Costa Rica. And according to International Living, some retired couples can live well in the country on $2,000 per month, while others require $2,500 to $3,000. Part of the reason the cost of living here is so affordable, affordable is because of the universal health care system. For a low monthly fee based on income, residents can get all their health care, such as doctor's visits, prescriptions, and surgeries for no additional cost. Next up, we have our neighbors south of the border in Mexico. And it says here that a couple can expect to live in Mexico for about $1,890 per month, according to International Living. Rent on a furnished two-bedroom home there is about $750. Now, you can actually find lower cost here depending on uh, you know, how cheaply you want to live, how uh, nice of amenities of rent you can get. So, um, you know, just if you look around, you feel comfortable there. Now, of course, in a lot of these countries, you will have to know some Spanish. Some of the others, you'll have to know even more. Some of these countries, such as, such as Panama, uh, English is actually a widely spoken language. So you could get away maybe with just speaking, uh, you know, solo English. But if you go to these countries and you know a little bit of Spanish, that, of course, will go a long ways. Next up on the list, we have Colombia. And according to International Living, Colombia has a low cost of living but offers a level of amenities and infrastructure that you would expect in a country with a much higher cost of living. The cost of living will vary depending on where you live within the country. However, it is possible to find a lifestyle that you enjoy that also fits your budget. 
A couple can expect to pay between $1,030 and $2,720 per month, which includes $325 to $1,300 rent for two bedroom, two bath accommodations, and a $250 to $400 grocery bill, which excludes alcohol and imported goods. Now, let me know in the comment section below if you know anyone who lives abroad or if it's something that you have thought about in the past, or if you've gone to any of these countries and you thought maybe, hey, you know, I could possibly live here. Now you can see the cost of living in these countries is much lower. So it is definitely something that you could consider if you're receiving only social security benefits. And right now what you have in your budget is really stretching you thin. You could go to one of these other countries and you could probably live pretty well with their cost of living. Now, if you don't feel comfortable, you know, leaving the United States, you don't feel comfortable leaving the country. Here, of course, is the 15 best places to live on only a social security check. This is going to be in the United States. This is also from Go Banking Rates. I'm not going to be going over all 15 of them just because I do not want this video to stretch out being too long. So on the list, the top five here. The first one we have College Station, Texas. So it says here that a relatively high average one bedroom rent contributes to keeping College Station out of the top spot and the average rent is $846.60. This may be a little bit outdated. I'm sure rents are a little bit higher, so it might be closer to $1,000 at this point in time. Next up, we have Lake Charles, Louisiana in San Angelo, Texas. We can see the average rent in Lake Charles is $693. Again, that might be a little bit higher. And then the top two on our list is Des Moines, Iowa, and also Abilene, Texas. So if you live in one of these places, let me know in the comment section below. Of course, these are gonna be higher than living abroad, but you know, again, we're going to have higher rents there than you would like maybe internationally. And of course, these rents are going to be higher than what you see on this list. But it is something to keep in mind if you live in a very expensive part of the country, perhaps California, New York, New Jersey, and maybe even Florida. Now, Florida is increasing in prices, so it might be something to keep in mind. Maybe you have to live to maybe you have to move to another part of the country to be able to afford rent and other things like that. It is unfortunate. It's very hard to pick up and move wherever you are across the country to something to somewhere more affordable but it is always definitely something to keep in mind. Now, according to The Hill and some other news, we have Morton fighting within the Republican Party. So Mitch McConnell is actually pulling his rival, Rick Scott, as well as Mike Lee off the powerful Commerce Committee. Um, I'm not sure if McConnell is saying is because Rick Scott actually challenged him for uh, being the Senate Majority Leader. Of course, Mike Lee backed Rick Scott. So it's kind of like, I guess, his revenge in a way. So interesting stuff there, more infighting within the Republican Party. It's, um, yeah, that's all I'm going to say there. But that's all the news that I have for today's video. Again, if you enjoyed the content in today's video, I would greatly appreciate it if you would give this video a like. Subscribe to my channel if you have not already, and I will see you in the next video.